Oh, that's a good shot. <laughs> mm, not a big one, dude. That was sick, dude. <laughs> hey guys, Johnny Jenkins here. We've got another awesome question from a viewer today. And he wants to know, he's saying, uh, I fish, wherever I fish is 15 foot is considered deep. So he's fishing anything less than really 15 foot of water, such as like ponds and stuff like that. And he wants to know if there would still be any benefits to fishing fluorocarbon line. Now I want to go ahead and start out. Fluorocarbon line is my favorite type of the basically three or four different main types that there, that there are. And it, it's more expensive and it can be a little bit more troublesome, but you know, it's so much more sensitive and the, the smaller diameter, but really this is the, the abrasion resistance to it and the more sensitive and the fact that it sinks is going to be way more sensitive. You're going to have a lot, lot better feel. I'm talking really, really, really good feel with it. So I would suggest absolutely without a doubt, do not let the depth of the water or hard, almost even the technique that you're fishing prevent you from fishing fluorocarbon line. I like sun line and I'm going to tell you, if you're going to fish, if you're going to fish a type of line, if you, the only thing that should hold you back is perhaps the price or Maybe you, you still need to get more experience with your casting and you don't want to go and waste a whole bunch of expensive fishing line. And that's what I did. I started out with monofilament because I wasn't that good with the casting and I wanted to get good. So after several months, this was like 10 years ago, when I got good with the bait caster and stuff, I switched over to fluorocarbon and I use it for just about everything that I have now. I mean, I use it, I use it sometimes, a good bit of the time with buzz baits. I like braid uh, actually, but you know, anything where I'm fishing a jig, soft plastic, Fluorocarbon is a must. I don't fish braid with a lot of that kind of stuff. Um, for me, fluorocarbon with crankbaits is absolutely essential. There's only really one time that I don't do that with uh, fluorocarbon lines. Spinnerbaits, key, got to have it. it. The line sinks, and that's going to help your feel. It's going to also help like crankbaits get down just a little bit deeper. But they also have more abrasion resistance, and they, ha they have less stretch. So it's going to be easier to set the hook. A lot of you guys, when you're fishing worms, and you don't fish too much, you have, a, you have an issue of not getting the hooks in the fish and they jump off. I promise you, step up to some fluorocarbon line, and in particular, some more expensive fluorocarbon line that is made to be more abrasion resistant, as in it's going to be tougher, it's not going to get the nicks in it near as easy, it's not going to break near as easy. And then also, it's going to have less stretch, so when you set the hook and there's tension on the line, it's not going to stretch near as much. So think of a rubber band. Monofilament, you stretch a rubber band out, monofilament literally stretches, okay? Fluorocarbon, especially the higher end stuff, really in particular the high end stuff, it's really big, big deal, the higher end stuff, because I've noticed, I'm going to just touch on this real quick. You get the cheaper fluorocarbon lines, the diameter of the line, and this is so critical, so critical. If you're going to buy fluorocarbon, I really advise buying the higher quality stuff. Besides that, you're really better off just going cheaper with monofilament because a lot of these fluorocarbons that are cheaper, they have a bigger diameter, and they're really, a lot of them, I'm pretty sure, are just fluorocarbon coated. You, you touch some really good, high quality fluorocarbon, and it's a totally different world, okay? So I advise fluorocarbon for any kind of worm fishing, jig fishing, uh, spin baiting, uh, or spy baiting. Oh my gosh, crank baits, spinner baits, chatter baits, uh, what else is there? I mean, honestly, I'll even do it sometimes with a couple of different top waters, but really I don't. But it's but that's that covers most of the techniques in fishing right there, right? So uh, fluorocarbon is absolutely the way to go. Never leave the house without it. And with thir almost 27 rods or so that I have, I probably have it tied on, I think, I think like 18 to 20 of my rods probably yeah I think so right around there so that gives you an idea it's a must no matter where you're fishing almost no matter how you're fishing you almost can't go, go wrong with it but I just advise getting higher higher quality stuff for sure so if you enjoyed this video uh, that was a question from a viewer so be sure to like and comment and if you have any questions you can submit yours down there and I'll get to them whenever I can and if you'd like a little shout out in yours you can let me know I can shout your name out when I do the video also some people want to be you know, unanimous and stuff like that. So any questions, you can submit 10 of them down there. Go ahead and drop them down there. You're not going to be blowing me up too much. I'm not going to be worried about it. I get to it as soon as I can. I enjoy doing these. So get back to me, and I'll talk to you guys later. Like, comment, and check the links in the description. Talk to you guys later.